numbers on that. Thanks. Shooter was killed. Uh, and, and the shooter might have been killed by police or something. But it, it's just so convenient like this other case. Thank you. Thank you, Chase. Jason in Tennessee, you're on the air. Thanks for holding. Hello, Alex. Can you hear me? Yes, I sure can. How are you doing? It's an honor to speak with you. Well, it's an honor to talk to you, brother. Uh, go ahead. I just wanted to say uh, thank you for everything you do. No, no, don't do that. You've walked me up. You've walked me up. I started listening to you probably right after 9-11, 2001. You woke me up, and I can't thank you enough for that. I was just like the other zombies watching the news and believing it. Well, Jason, I can't thank I... WBCR 1470, our oldest affiliate after Rochester, New York, two affiliates we have up there, Dr. Wolf stations uh, that still air the broadcast. But thank you so much, Jason. Uh, give us your take on what's happening. Uh, they're now rolling out the script exactly as I predicted. It's not hard to do because they were telling us what they would do. A thousand times. Uh, but I tell you what, my grandfather stormed the beaches of Normandy. I have an uncle that died in Vietnam. My brother was a Navy SEAL, served in Bosnia. And I'll tell you what, if they, they want to roll that out against the American people, they're, they're going to, that's the worst mistake they could ever make. Yeah, right I, I mean, there is a disconnect. The globalists know what they're doing, but George Soros just ratted people out and had them thrown in concentration camps. He didn't actually do the killing. And it goes for all these other MSNBC people and all the rest of them. I, I mean, I mean, they literally, I, they're not going to get away with what they've done if they cause a civil war in this country. I will guarantee you, in the end, they are they are the ones that ought to be worried. And I know they're a bunch of cowards. Why do you think they don't understand what they're doing? I guess they haven't studied military history. They haven't studied asymmetrical warfare. They haven't studied this country. I guess they haven't. I guess they haven't even studied Afghanistan or Iraq, that the greatest military power in the world can't even uh, lock down those countries. I mean... What makes them think they're going to be able to lock down America? <laughs> what does your family, what, what does your Navy SEAL brother think about all this? You know what? He's a little bit skeptical, but, you know, every now and again, he'll get a few beers in him and tell me some things that'll make your skin crawl. And I'm not even going to say it over, over the phone. I don't want to get him in trouble or nothing. But, what, uh, torturing people, okay. shipping drugs in? What? What is it? Uh, well, kind of more, more along the lines of like, uh, that movie Resident Evil. He got hurt, he got hurt when he was a steal and he had to, he had to touch a high security clearance that he did other things, so to speak. And, uh, he, he could tell you things that'll make your skin crawl. Oh, I know. They've got he those clone, they've got those clone bases and everything else. Yeah. The public isn't ready to hear all that. Very interesting. I appreciate your call. Yeah. Cloning's been going on since the Nazis. That's now declassified. Rabbits. Rabbits are the most fertile creature, fertile mammal that we know of. They've been cloning humans in embryonic form since the 80s. And they always bury it like a footnote. I remember, we're going to skip this network break. And then we'll just go out with the, uh, whatever you guys want. I just want to say this crew for a three-hour radio show, some days longer, is the hardest working folks. The way they just jump and scramble when I get in my manic mode here on air. I want to just want to pray for folks, pray for my great crew, and salute them. What a great crew. The radio crew is in the bunker. They are in the command base. And it's like uh, Ender's Game. We're actually engaged in the New World Order, and we thought it was all a game the whole time. <laughs> uh, let's go ahead. I appreciate your call. Let's go ahead. I have to skip this break, so I have time to get to all the callers, as promised. The globalists are making the same mistake Napoleon and Hitler made, literally starting war with Russia. But if they think Russia is going to be an issue, the American people kicked the redcoats' butt. And I don't care how much mind control you've got, how much propaganda. It may have 80% of the public caught in its web, and I think that's a high number. You don't have the rest of the people, and if people won't change and won't submit and won't roll over in the dirt, there are a lot of people that aren't scared. It's beyond being scared. You've got an instinct that my biggest problem, because I'm only like 5'10", 5'11", I hunch over, so I'm 5'10", and I am a big guy. I mean, I'm muscular, 
but I'm not like some of these huge guys that are six, seven, you know, 300 pounds, can bench press, you know, 600 pounds. And a lot of big guys are nice, but I have this problem, like if a big guy tries to push his way past me or treat me like I'm a little guy, I mean, I have, I guess you'd call it Napoleonic syndrome. I say, listen, I mean, immediately I want to, I want to climb up on top of them and kick their ass. And it's, and it's actually a weakness of mine that I've developed not to be so, you know, looking for trouble. Because uh, I don't look for fights, but the, the worst time is some big guy starts a fight with me, man. I just and, and what it is is it's fight or flight. And I finally psychologically in the last decade figured out what it is and have learned to just control it. Uh, and and uh, you know let let you know big guys push me around and stuff because I got bigger fights to fight. Is that it's a fight or flight? I mean, a big guy's pushing me around at a primitive level. My body gears up to you know go after him. And the. You know, most of the time, they're not going to win because I'm the little guy and they're in the wrong. I'm cornered. And it's the same thing with this government. That's why I'm not afraid of them. It's the opposite. I'm just like, these are bad, evil people who hate humanity. And my instincts are, let's fight them. But you don't fight them stupid by going in a grocery store and shooting cops who are probably good people. Even if they were bad, they deserve a trial. We don't become the New World Order to fight the New World Order is what I'm trying to get at. And I really appreciate that last caller. You touched my heart, sir. God bless you. Yeah, there's all sorts of weird experiments going on and just stuff that's off the chart. And, and, and it's industrial level. I'm not bragging when I say that when in the 80s, this late 80s, my mom and dad had multiple discussions and my dad would say, let's talk about it privately and stuff like that with my mom. So I never even heard all of it. He won't talk about it today. Where the CIA tried to hire him, because I had some family that did stuff for the CIA, to be inducted in Maryland into literal below-ground bases for a four-year secret tour. And they were hiring other top dentists that were pioneering implants. My dad pioneered implants and would, you know, taught it at, at, at medical school and all that. And it was literally, they just said it's cybernetics, it's highly advanced, and he was and and, and it was and it was four hundred thousand dollars a year, way more money than he was making then, and he owned dental offices. And he said no. Because my dad did did work at the medical school. He he was he was someone who would do medical procedures on high level CIA people. They would come into him and then they would not allow deadening. They would have people there watching while he did procedures on people just because they can't be put under. That was back during the Cold War. And, and so my dad did do that. Probably get mad at me even telling this. But the whole point is, is that what that guy was talking about, I mean, it's reportedly really bad what's going on now. I mean, you name it, Island of Dr. Maru level stuff, ladies and gentlemen. And... It, it's just, it's just from what I've been told by high level people, not my dad, he was just went and interviewed and was told about it. And, um, uh, it's just, it's, it's, it's just, we're not in Kansas is what I'm trying to tell people. Uh, let's go to GB in Louisiana. Go ahead. You're on the air. Hey, Alex. Thanks for taking my call. You bet. Welcome. Hey, um, I just wanted to let you know that I have, uh, I've taken your advice. And I uh, started uh, my own web page, uh, aggregating some uh, some news, trying to wake up my local community down here in New Orleans, and uh, doing some um, uh, man on the street type interviews down in the uh, French Quarter, just trying to wake up regular folks like me and you. Well, keep it up. What do you think about what's going on with the attempt to start the Civil War? Do you disagree they're trying to do that, or what do you think? No, I agree. I just I just uh, completed a citizens academy with my uh, local sheriff um, down here, and um, I confronted him on the fact that he was reiterating these talking points that you that you've been mentioning um, over the last you know God knows how long about um, domestic terrorism and how they weren't worried about Al Qaeda anymore, and that that. They've got to do something because people are dying every day. And I asked him, you know, where? Who, who like, you know, they, he was speaking like there was already a war going well, on. Well, that's because MSNBC and, and CNN go, there's an epidemic of Tea Partiers killing people. 36 in 12 years. That's three a year. Yeah, that's the opposite of, a, of, an, of an epidemic. 
That's less yeah. people than great white sharks kill every year, one of the rarest ways to die. I mean, my point is, no, no, that's the thing. They've got to do something. Harry Reid's on the Senate floor. We have the clip. we got to shut down free speech, the Tea Party. I mean, this is outrageous. <coughs> I've e I emailed uh, uh, Kurt Nimmo uh, about an article that I'm working on, and I've included some audio footage from... Uh, from what he had to say, just a snippet of that. So, who is this that was saying that? Who who is who is telling you this? This is the uh, this is the sheriff down here in Jefferson Parish, Louisiana, and uh, he's one of the biggest uh, sheriffs because because of the population. That oh, we I know, have. I know. That's the main one. And and and, and he's saying they got to do something about what? Because I know we have an article with another sheriff saying we got to prepare for war with the veterans because of the epidemic. It's a talking point, and they go out and say there's an epidemic of veterans killing police. We've got to go after them. Really? Where? Where? This Joker guy wasn't a veteran. I mean, he's saying, he's saying they've got to gear up for who? He was saying that people are dying every day because of domestic terrorism and that that he wasn't worried about al-Qaeda anymore. Um, I have to finish listening to the rest of the audio because it, it, it has been a couple of weeks since I completed the class and I've been working on my website. Sir, that's incredible. I want to put you on hold. I want to give you uh, to our reporters, Adon Salazar, Kurt Nemo, whoever it is you want to talk to. That is a powerful article that, that we need to put out that they're teaching that in classes. I mean, that's the official rollout, that that the Tea Party is the new al-Qaeda and Alex Jones is its leader. I, I'm basically the new Osama bin Laden. I mean, let's, let's just get it straight here. And, you know, you wake up in the morning and you discover that you're being blamed for cop killings and you're the new terror leader. I mean, it's, it's weird. <laughs> That's all I can say. My life is officially Twilight Zone level. Uh, sir, I'm going to put you on hold. Um, are you in college or high school? What what type of class was this? No, I, I've completed college. I'm a professional, and this is a this is a citizens academy sponsored by the sheriff's office. To basically, uh, I guess it's a, a PR type. Uh, oh, I got it. That's amazing. Uh, so event. citizens. Citizens being taught, sheriff teaches citizens, citizen snitch classes, sheriff teaches citizens in snitch classes. How do you put a headline on it? Uh, a law enforcement snitch class says, watch your neighbor, or says Tea Party's the terrorist. You think that's a fair headline? Well, yeah, it's something like that, but it's not just that, because he, I got him on audio saying that he, you know, he wishes he could have those FFL. Uh, certificates as well, and, and I'm sure the people of Louisiana wouldn't appreciate that their, uh, you know, gun-loving sheriff would uh, want to have a registration. Wait a minute, the sheriff wants to get your guns registered? You're kidding. I've got it. I've got it on audio. By the way, we've got it up. It says Jefferson Parish Sheriff's Office Safety Citizens Academy guidelines. And see, folks, you don't want to just sit in a bunker getting guns ready. You want to go to all these events. You want to get intel for America and expose all these people that are teaching treason. God bless you, brother. I really want to hear that. Thank you so much. Uh, Lee in Georgia, thanks for holding here on the air. Hey, Alex. Um, I met you once before at the uh, Dallas Fed rally. But yes, I sir, brother. About the, uh, about the uh, children that they are shipping into the country. All these immigrants, they're illegal immigrants, and, um, you know, how are they getting in here? You know, No, it's, in the, it, it, it's in the local news. Parents yeah, put I their kids on plan. planes, they land, and Customs has been told, take the children, give them lawyers, give them to Obama. They're Obama's cult children to be used as a political pawn now and say, you must legalize them. Look at little Felipe. He's your responsibility. I mean, literally. Well, it just set my spidey senses off, you know, because... Seems to me like you know they're storing them at military bases now and all this stuff. Like, what if they're going to use them as child soldiers? At a point well, they say they're being abused. Like I mean, I don't know. We well, look. Oliver North wanted to use rounding up immigrants in an in an immigrant wave as a cover to build FEMA camps and to get everybody used to military holding large groups of non-criminal populations, and that's called Rex 84. That's declassified. So, yeah, that could be it, brother. Great points. I'm sorry to Greg in North Carolina. No, no, you know what? We're going to continue overdrive. We'll come back with the fixed bayonets clip, and then we'll go to uh, Jeff 
and Mark and everybody else straight ahead. We've got a Jakari Jackson intro as well we're going to play. Let's, let's play the Jakari Jackson clip when we come back. We're just going to keep going. Stay with us. We're on the march.